we got this regarding The Verge. The Verge put this article together, and I've actually checked out the video myself. But um, obviously, CES happened the other day, and a lot of kind of cool gadgets kind of propped up there. I think I, I should have actually spoke about that flipping tripod. There's a really cool tripod that some company made. I think it's Belkin or something. Essentially, it can auto track you. So it's a tripod that you can use your phone with. And essentially, if you're doing like content online, like YouTube, TikTok, whatever it may be, and you want to record, you know, yourself, I don't know, cooking, dancing, whatever you're doing online it can actually like follow your movements it can track you like it's absolutely amazing um little um you know tripod which i think a lot of content creators like myself or maybe others that do more of that kind of you know uh, portrait style content shit will probably be um on top of getting but one thing that i really like was this ai um gadget that this company called rabbit have put out called the r1 I'm not too sure if you guys have seen this. It's really fucking cool. The first thing I love about it is just the design. It's made by this company called Teenage Engineering, um, who are known for making really, um, you know, amazing, bespoke, super, really well-made and designed um, audio equipment, basically, like speakers and whatnot. They've got a really cool set of headphones also. So um, this company called Rabbit, um, AI company, pa um, partnered up with Teenage Engineering to put together this kind of, you know, this unit. Um, maybe it's like a smartphone S type of phone, but essentially it's like a digital companion, essentially, right? It's like a companion for yourself or an, an AI assistant, for lack of a better term. But the really amazing thing about it is that if i'm not mistaken um this is more of a an assistant because it actually has the ability to, for to actually finish tasks for you so it's not just something about gathering information it's actually got a language learning model that allows you to actually kind of book an uber to be able to kind of you know ask the ask the assistant to flip in you know get you a pizza and just you know and decide which one that they should probably get to you based on your taste and your interest to recommend certain things it can kind of follow through the entire thing in terms of just kind of giving you bits of information you have to prompt it it can kind of definitely give it to you along the way and i do like how the interface is works through the interface works like a walkie-talkie where you essentially press this button here on the side and then you can kind of prompt um you know the ai assistant and then kind of speak to it in your normal voice you don't have to use a special hello rabbit type of thing you don't have to speak in a certain cadence you can just ask the questions that you want to ask and obviously um the rabbit can respond the way it responds um but i've got a clip here that i clipped from the actual long presentation um itself of the founder actually talking about it that can give you a better idea of how it kind of works so let's play the clip here so you can see why i'm so excited about this r1 um, ai assistant and why i'll probably end up getting one myself because this is really flipping cool i'm not gonna lie for services and logging through them to get authenticated on your device. It's that easy. Now, let's play some music. Play Craftworks Pocket Calculator. Playing Pocket Calculator by Craftwork for you. Play another song from the album. Sure, playing Computer Love for you. That's all the tracks from the same album. Who wrote the lyrics for this song? Ralph Hutter and Emil Schultz wrote the lyrics for the song Computer Love by Kraftwerk. Which band sampled this song? It seems that Coldplay's Talk is the only known example of a song that sampled Computer Love. What do you think about this song? Computer Love by Kraftwerk. Yeah, big up, Cloud. Culture Drop. Yo. Big ups. Happy you could join me and the fam on some Saturday errands. Oh yeah, big up chocolate drop. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining the stream as well. Big up the fam. Hope the errands go well, my thing. Big up, big up. Thank you for the super chat. Is widely regarded as a groundbreaking and influential song in the realm of electronic music. Its fusion of catchy melodies, robotic vocals, and innovative use of synthesizers has left a lasting impact on the genre. I can also use R1 to call a ride. Get me a ride from my office to home now. Of course, I will book an Uber ride for you from your office to your home. Please confirm the ride. I have six people with three luggages. Find me an Uber that can fit all of us. For six people and three pieces of luggage, I recommend booking an Uber XL as it provides ample space for all passengers and luggage. Please confirm the ride. 
the red shows up, I just hit confirm. Uber's on my way. I can also use R1 to order food. Get me a 12-inch pizza from Pizza Hut delivered to here. The most ordered option on the app is fine. Ordering a 12-inch pizza from Pizza Hut. Since you mentioned that the most ordered option is fine, I will select that for you. I just created an order for a 12-inch pizza. It's going to be hand-tossed with a classic marinara sauce and topped with regular cheese. Please confirm your order. That sounds really good. I just confirmed the order here. To your preferred services and login through them. So, as you can see, what makes this really amazing is that, as somebody pointed out in the chat, the founder himself has a very thick accent, and he's able to basically, you know, um, tell the AI what he wants to be done and the AI completely understands it without him having to speak in a certain cadence, speak very slowly, use certain prompt words. It kind of understands his quote unquote natural language, which is one of the key things that I kind of like about it. The other thing that I also love, 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 love about it is the fact that the hardware itself is pretty plain. It it kind of is meant to sort of replace your phone. I guess if you wanted it to technically, if you could, you could just make this an app. But I do love the idea that it kind of takes away from your phone and that level of distraction. Because I think in general, this as much as the smartphones aren't the issue, it's obviously the apps and the social media side of things that just make them a little bit of a time sink, right? They make them really hard to sort of like put away. They make them really hard to sort of focus on tasks and kind of live your life in whatever it may be. I love that the fact that this AI assistant is there for you when you need an assistant, but it isn't meant to be something that you just stand there using all the fucking time, right? That's not the thing that it kind of works. It kind of works better because um, it just basically uses itself as an assistant. And that's basically, most of the main kind of um, prompts that I sort of like about it. and of course the design itself the fact that it's got this kind of cool walkie-talkie design where you can kind of you know um, press the button here on the side and raise it to your mouth and speak to it as well I love that that kind of changes the utility of using it itself it's not just kind of like a standard sort of smartphone design with the same sort of like you know rectangular square thing with a touch screen it just requires a different sort of type of vibe I think that kind of changes um, how you use it on a day-to-day -day basis but let's actually read a bit of the article here on the verge that kind of gives a little bit more of a uh, blood of what it kind of is about um and also the price itself 100 199 dollars is really really good it says here jesse Liu, the ceo and founder of ai startup rabbit says he doesn't want to replace your smartphone he at least not right away his company new gadget the 199 standalone ai device called the r1 is so staggeringly ambitious that Liu seems to think he can't help but replace your phone at some point just not quite yet um oh shit they're already sold out as as of the 10th of january rabbit announced the 10,000 units of the r1 has already sold out and now it's making pre-orders for the second shipment in spring amazing the r1 looks like a little play date console or maybe a modernized version of the 190s era handheld tv it's a standalone gadget of half the size of an iphone with a 2.8 inch tight screen and a rotating camera for taking photos and videos and a scroll on a wheel button to press and navigate around and to talk to the device on the built-in assistant it has 2.3 gigahertz mid tech processor processor a four gigabyte of memory and 128 gigabyte of storage all inside of a rounded body designing collaboration with design firm teenage engineering all rabbit um, says the battery it lasts all day i spent a few minutes with the r1 after rabbit's launch and it's an impressive piece of hardware only one device was actually functional and even that one couldn't do much because of the spotty hotel wi-fi but the r1 is surprisingly light it's much nicer than it looks in pictures its buttons are clicky and satisfying which is no surprise from the teenage engineering and the whole thing fits in nicely into my grip as you can see there for the pictures it looks fucking beautiful to be fair as a, as a piece of design it looks absolutely incredible there I'm not going to lie. It looks really fucking good. Um, what's the screen saying in the back here? Way more faster and more intuitive. Um, teach mode can do things that a phone can never will. Unless it's got a camera as well and a touch screen. Um, the software inside Rabbit is a real story. Rabbit's operating system called Rabbit OS and the AI tech underneath. Rather than chat GPT like large language model, Rabbit says the OS is based on a large action model. See, that's the main difference. It's a large action model. And the best way I can describe it is that the sort of universal controller for apps. We wanted it to 
find a universal solution just like the large language models how can we find a universal solution to actually trigger our services regardless of whether you're a website or an app or whatever platform or desktop which is the real genius part of it to be fair um it continues in spirit it's an idea similar to alexa or google assistant rabbit os can control your music order your car buy your groceries send your messages or more all for a single interface no balancing apps and loggings just ask for what you want and let the device deliver the r ones on-screen interface will be a series of category-based cards from music to transportation or video chats and lou says the screen mostly exists so that you can verify the model's outputs on your own so so obviously it's based more on just you, you it's obviously geared more towards you talking to the assistant and obviously getting it to complete your task as opposed to you browsing around and kind of fidgeting with the touch screen the touch screen dash there's a, like a confirmation you know window or something or screen itself and you see here the design in the back um again you know being a being a bit of a pro design freak the i've always been interested in making sure the design of a product is amazing on the front on the back and on the inside and this is obviously proof of it like look how beautiful that looks at the back you got the little speaker here you got the little scroll touch wheel thing you've also got the camera that can flick around it looks absolutely brilliant at the back as it does at the front love it it continues rather than build a bunch of apis and try to convince developers to support the r1 though rabbit trained this model on how to use existing apps for itself um the large action model or lamb learned what the settings icon looked like how to know when an order was confirmed and where the search menus are all of that Liu says um, can be applied to any app anywhere the r1 also has a dedicated training mode which can use um, to teach the device on how to do something and it will supposedly be able to repeat the action with its own going forward Liu gives an example you'll be like hey First of all, go to a software called Photoshop, open it, grab your photos here, make a lasso and a watermark, click, click, click. This is how you remove a watermark. It takes 30 seconds for RabbitOS to process, Lou says, and then it can automatically remove your watermarks going forward. How of all this actually works in practice though is a real question. You'll be able to do some things with the R1 itself and there's a web, there's a web portal called Rabbit Hole through which you can log into your various services. And um, if you say, that teach the device how to use Photoshop, you'll be able to to boot one of rabbit's virtual machines and teach it rather than using your own device or software but how will it work with other users and devices and platforms will be tricky to get right rabbit's approach here is pretty clever getting people getting anyone to support a new operating system is tough even if you're a tech giant and lamb um way subverts that by teaching the model how to use the apps more broadly big up eric c big up eric c Manchester is blue, blue uh, heart, ha, ha. trophy, blue heart, oh, actually, um, trophy, what's the blue heart, trophy. Big up Eric C. What's the score actually? It's actually 2-2 two, two, I think, isn't it, right? Last time I checked. Is it 2-2? Two, two? Against Man City. It's actually quite, it's been, been quite a good game, I'm not going to lie. I watched a bit of the first half, I watched the first half, and obviously I had to kind of jump on stream here and record the pod, but yeah, it's 2-2 two, two still at the moment, so I guess Manchester is halfway blue, halfway blue. It's halfway blue, halfway black or white, but big up Eric C big up eric c moving on listening to Liu talk about the rabbit os and the r1 though it's not me it's not entirely clear what the company's vision for the device really is it's not nearly powerful enough to replace your phone though it can make video calls and does have a slot for a sim card it's primarily a voice assistant but the device has a screen and a camera it's not just a voice assistant but it does have a voice assistant things rabbit says it has designed rabbit os with the security and the privacy in mind it also is asking you to log in at some point the r1 in lose voy in lose view sorry is both a nifty accessory and an all-in future of pretty much everything that's probably why I think it's great because I think it's going to evolve over time. Um, I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily think the fact that they don't know what it's actually going to end up being in the end is a bad thing. I think overall it's going to evolve and people are going to learn how they're going to use it and what the best case scenario is for it. And then over time, that will obviously inform how, what direction the company goes. And I think that's obviously the beauty of having a startup. You can kind of change direction, change course along the way and learn in real time. So I don't think there's any you know issue with that. I think if anything, this speaks to the bigger conversation around AI and how difficult it is to kind of wrangle as to what the, you know, 
as to how it can be used to its best like what are the actual use cases for using ai do you use it mainly as a platform to kind of you know um start ideas from right like myself like if i'm thinking of maybe doing a dj mix maybe i would go on and you know on a on a chatbot and maybe you know ask the chatbot to put together a list of options in terms of tunes that i may may like that might sound similar to something i was going to play and that might be a launching off point for me to then dig in and check for other tunes in my library or from my own mind i can think of maybe it's a it's a design assistant right maybe it can kind of do some of the laborious kind of heavy work for you when it comes to design and then some of the creative free sort of like expressive shit you can do on your own who knows and maybe the assistant thing's a good thing maybe there is a future where um ai assistants work hand in hand with smartphones or maybe you have them separate maybe you do have a separate smartphone and a separate ai assistant me personally i prefer that i would actually love to go back to a world where we had separate yo big up um high def thank you for super chat brother big up high def uh, no message there but big up high def for the super chat appreciate it, brother thank you for tuning in um I would actually like to go back to a world, and I've said this previous, previously before, I would love to go back to a world where we have separate music players. Because I feel like nowadays, I don't listen to music just as enough, or as enough, enough as I should, mainly because I'm constantly on my phone and I'm too distracted, um, you know, what checking shit on social media and doing all sorts of other stuff and browsing on the internet. I think I listened to far more music when I had a dedicated iPod that I used to kind of, you know, download music onto and shit all the freaking time, as opposed to being on your phone and, you know, browsing other things and get distracted and all this malarkey because essentially your phone is one big, you know, distraction device and doesn't really allow you to sort of like do anything else apart from that. Most of the apps that are built on there also are kind of built around the idea or the main premise behind it is to make sure that you keep their app open for as much as possible so maybe um this whole separate ai assistant thing whether it's the you know humane pin or all these other companies that exist i actually do like that they are doing um this level of thing where it's kind of like an it's a separate assistant because don't get me wrong there is i can understand people who look at this thing and think it's useless even i've seen somebody here saying um from z saying that it looks like an unfinished prototype i can understand why people feel that way because the use cases for it aren't really clear it's not really clear why you would need this why it couldn't just be an app or whatever it may be i think i saw somebody even on social media some guy um i think managed to find a way to boot the entire operating system on like an apple watch or something right so obviously clearly people are like you know what i don't like the hardware but the, op the operating system is pretty cool i love the you know the ai as well um the like la large action model is actually something that i would actually want to use let me boot it on an iphone or let me boot it to a flipping um apple watch i understand it but i actually like it being separate i like the fact that i have a separate device that isn't my phone that isn't a distraction machine and that i could just use as a as a virtual assistant in the same way you know an actual assistant wouldn't tell you hey just google it you know if you had an, if you actually had an assistant that you hired and you wanted to say hey could you tell me something whatever the question is they wouldn't reply back just google it yourself or something their whole job is to be the person that kind of you know follows through on the stuff that you don't want to do yourself so that you're free to do other things you know that you maybe should be concentrating more on so i don't really mind that too tough and again design wise i think it's fucking beautiful and it's just something that you know as a tech junkie myself i would love to just have in hand and own because that looks flipping cool that red that iconic sort of like red color um sort of similar to like the apple you know project red thing that they have going on um the click wheel thing which you scroll around with on the phone here that's a really cool design the walkie talkie button at the side that you press to kind of call on it is pretty cool and of course the camera as well i'm a big fan of so the design wise i love um i love the you know the prospect of what it could be of how it could be used and i just think the idea of having a virtual assistant in your pocket that could actually finish tasks that could actually book a holiday like the i guess the use case scenario for me would be you know booking a spontaneous trip and it could actually follow through and book the entire thing from the hotel to the airbnb to maybe the car hire you know to the flight everything could be done without you having to kind of be constantly talking to the ai you know all the time and it kind of figuring out certain things is absolutely cool i fucking love everything about it. i'm not going to lie that's definitely something that i would definitely use um on a daily basis if i actually had it so big up rabbit love the r1 
it looks really really cool cannot wait to see when actual real people end up using it and how it actually works in the real world cannot wait to see